services, they've been manned, they've been on the station, and affected the city as a whole. Well, that's what we're Thank you, thank you. And I hope all the tourists here, I hope you're all spending a lot of money in New York. <laughs> we, we love your dollars and you know, we're happy to see you here. New York is up and operating, you know. Uh, I, I thank you so much and uh, this is the continuation of a series of announcements that we are going to have. And uh, first we want to do these announcements of these important appointments and then we'll answer uh, a few co questions on COVID and the letter that was put out to, today by some city council members uh, so that we can sort of wrap this up uh, uh, as we move forward during these uh, challenging and difficult times. Uh, but listen, I know this city and I know this city is resilient. Uh, and I have been part of that resiliency uh, throughout my history as a police officer, state senator, ball president, and now the incoming mayor of the city of New York. And so I'm really proud, proud to be here today uh, that I can announce uh, several uh, new members of our team and they have dedicated their entire uh, lives to helping the people of the city of New York. And I'm joined here with my first deputy, uh, Mayor Lorraine Grillo, who is just a true uh, professional and the anchor of our team. Her years in uh, service and government a person that lives by the acronym GSD, Get Stuff Done. Uh, she is going to anchor this team and, and get this city moving in the right direction. Right here, we're standing in the Open Streets Program, a su successful initiative that was put in place uh, during uh, COVID. It was a great opportunity to expand our streets and ensure uh, that uh, we could allow people to move through this city uh, by practicing social distancing, and ensuring that we can also keep our city up and thriving. It was a, a lifeblood for our small businesses, offering space and recreational opportunities, and we want to continue to expand this. And under my administ administration, uh, we're going to deepen the success of these programs and similar type programs, and we're going to expand this into black and brown communities that have historically been ignored when you use a level of creativity in moving around. Uh, at the same time, uh, again and again, I talk about building a team, a, a team that's made up of individuals who are emotionally intelligent and are focusing on delivering services uh, for our city. You have witnessed some of my recent announcements from my um, commissioner of the NYPD, the commissioner, the first Latino to be the commissioner of the Department of Correction, the first woman of color, of African, and of uh, Latino ancestry to be the police commissioner. Uh, five amazing women yesterday announced to be our deputy mayors. Uh, so the team is clear and I am going to continue to make history. And today we are, an, I'm proud to announce another group of history makers uh, that I'm, I'm extremely proud of. And one of them is Adonis Rodriguez. Uh, Adonis is going to become the commissioner of DOT. First, a Latino to become the commissioner of DOT. Uh, that is a significant moment because far too often uh, the abilities and skills that Adonis has shown as a former council member and a leader on safe streets, expanding bike lines, pedestrian plazas, and what he has shown as being a voice for the voiceless in so many areas. It was his vision to have car free day and the expansion of the city bike program into underserved uh, neighborhoods and communities. And this is what Adonis is going to bring uh, to the table, his level of diversity and understanding uh, that all voices must and should be heard. And I'm excited, I've learned so much from him on the campaign trail, his level of commitment to this city, of ensuring that this is a city for all the people. And this is what I ideally stated when we must have the various voices at the table pushing government forward. And so uh, this historic announcement today of having 
of my good friend and the good friend of this city, Adonis Rodriguez, as the new incoming commissioner for the for DOT. Adonis? Thank you. Gracias, señor alcalde. Quiero dedicar el nombramiento de hoy a todos los neoyorquinos que trabajan duro y todavía están aprendiendo el inglés. I want to dedicate your announcement to all the English language learners like myself and mainstream media. As strong as my accent, is my strong commitment to love this city, to love this nation, and to carry on the vision of the next mayor of New York City, our friend, Eric Adams. I want to start out by thanking Mayor-elect Adams for appointing me as the first Latino commissioner to head the Department of Transportation. Everyone that knows my track record knows that yes, I have my strong accent, open your ear <laughs> to get my word, but also everyone knows that I have always advocated for the safety of pedestrians and cyclists. And as the chairman of the Transportation Committee, I have worked with countless stakeholders, private and public and academic, to ensure that we are making our streets as safe as we can. 2021 has been the one of the deadliest years in recent memory for pedestrians and cyclists on our city street. 100 pedestrians and cyclists have been killed on our roads this year alone. We are not only facing a pandemic due to COVID, but a pandemic of unsafe streets that must be tackled head on and on in order to cultivate what we can prevent, death and serious injuries. I'm committed to implementing Mayor-elect Eric Adams' vision of a more liable, sustainable, and equitable transportation system, and we will start it on day one. We'll be doubling down the infrastructure investments, specifically targeting loan undeserved communities that often see the highest levels of crashes and fatality. But with our comparable levels of investment as compared to wealthy communities to achieve our goal of reallocating 25% of a street space to people-oriented use by 2025. That means making sure we get open restaurant and open streets regulation right, and one that prioritizes supporting our local economy and communities. We'll be working with the Department of Sanitation to build on garbage containerization to clean up our streets. We are going to commit to replacing 50% of all plastic protected bike lanes with studders and more permanent structures within the first 100 days and find a solution to expand bike sharing programs across all corners of New York City with the protected cycling infrastructures necessary to continue grow bike ridership. We are going to launch a safe route to a school pilot program to close off a street around a school doing drop off and pick up. We are going to reimagine our bus network so bus riders are giving priority on a street space. So many of our bus riders are essential workers and we must continue building bus ways, real bus rapid transit and enhance selective bus services to get more New Yorkers and visitors out of their cars and into sustainable mode of transportation. We are going to reset 
the relationship with the MTA and work with the agency to deliver reliable and on-time services for all New Yorkers. When I was in the train today, there was not information about that the train was moving from express to local. People had to get information before they get in the train and when they are in the train. Especially those in working class communities. We will also partner with the state to advance the important implementation of congestion pricing. And this is just going to get us started. Thank you to the hard work of our colleagues at the federal level. We will be counting with the support of an unprecedented level of federal infrastructure investment coming to New York City. We need to make sure we are spending those dollars on sustainable transportation projects that not only make our infrastructure greener and more resilient, but also great, create good paying jobs to get our city moving again in a more equitable way. I'm excited to work towards implementing Major Elect Adams' vision in partnership with all the partners in government, and I can't wait to get started. Hoy nosotros comenzamos un día nuevo con un alcalde que va a ser el mejor en la historia de esta ciudad, que va a mover a la ciudad. La transportación la vamos a convertir en una, una transportación eficiente, segura, y vamos a seguir la visión de él para convertir a la ciudad de Nueva York en la ciudad que sea más pro peatón y ciclista. Sí se puede, Mr. Mayor. Continuing uh, with making sure the diversity is the theme of this administration, uh, I'm excited to announce uh, the appointment uh, to the TLC commissioner and chair. Uh, she's going through the process now, and I have to ensure that the city council uh, continues the process moving forward for her, for her. I'm excited about her presence and her energy and spirit. Uh, we are here to announce Aloisi Aredia, uh, to be the TLC Commissioner and Chair. She has served here as TLC Commissioner and Chair since 2020, has helped the taxi and for hire vehicle industry navigate the disruptions of COVID-19, a steady hand at the wheel. Uh, it was extremely disruptive when COVID hit our city and she showed her fortitude, her commitment and dedication and has worked to advance the administration's transportation priorities, including debt relief for taxi and medallion owners. A horrific period in our city. She was at the helm, and I was extremely impressed with how we were able to navigate that extremely difficult time. And as our taxi and for hire drivers continue to fight for fair wages and whether uh, this pandemic, uh, she is a clear leader to continue become a staunch advocate for equity and fairness. And this is the type of energy we want in our administration. So congratulations and welcome on board. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor-elect Adams, for reaffirming my current post and for your vote of confidence. I am incredibly grateful to be continuing to lead the Taxi and Limousine Commission. On behalf of our agency and the board, we are thrilled to join Team Adams and to doing our part to ensure success for the new administration. We will not let you down and we will not let the city of New York down. I would also like to acknowledge the League of Extraordinary Deputy Mayors announced yesterday it speaks volumes about our new mayor and how our team will accomplish goals for New York City. I would be remiss if I did not express gratitude and appreciation for our incoming first deputy, Mayor Grillo, who has been a positive example and mentor for so many of us citywide. We are so proud of her and thank her for always setting a good example. As for the TLC, our industry and licensees have faced very difficult times. 
The last decade has brought about significant challenges and hardships, many of which were exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite all, the industry has persevered. We are laying the groundwork for recovery, including comprehensive solutions to address medallion-related debt and shifting the agency to a client service model that better serves its licensees so that they can focus on earning a living as professional drivers. We are eager to work with Mayor-elect Adams. Together, we will fully implement strong support and recovery packages for the industry. Our licensees are largely immigrant and working class communities. They take their work as essential workers seriously and we in turn are committed to taking their needs and experiences seriously. We will take all necessary steps to ensure a properly regulated environment and to ensure investments, including, uh, including fleet electrification, technological improvements, new capital and financing opportunities, and ultimately to ensure all entities serve the industry well. Now I'd like to say a few words in Spanish. You know, estoy muy agradecida por la oportunidad para continuar en mi posición en la TLC. Tenemos mucho trabajo que hacer por la ciudad, por el buen estado de la ciudad y por nuestras comunidades. El alcalde Adams y su equipo pueden contar conmigo en cualquier cosa que necesiten para que podamos tener éxito. Sin duda, estamos aquí para trabajar y luchar para todos los neoyorquinos y específicamente, especialmente, para las generaciones latinoamericanos y hispanos. Adelantos unidos. Gracias. And now, final two appointments. Uh, I'm going to call up uh, my partner, uh, the first Deputy Mayor, Lorraine Grillo. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor Alec. Uh, the next two appointments are a little bit different. I don't think we've had this in the city of New York, but because of the mayor's vision, we determined that it was really, really important that certain things in our city be done collaboratively and well-coordinated. So I'd like to first call up, uh, call Matt Frazier, who will be the chief technology officer for the city of New York. It's a brand new position, and as I said, Matt will take us into the 21st century and make all of our systems throughout this city work together. So Matt, I'm really excited. You have a stellar reputation. If you want to say a few words, please. Uh, so first and foremost, I'd like to thank Mayor-elect Eric Adams for giving me this opportunity. The vision for the next, the next four years is for, very simple. Democratizing access to city services. When you interact with the city from a technology perspective or from a business perspective, there's no reason why you can't come to one place to get access to all the things that you're entitled to. So one of the first things that we're gonna look at is how we can simplify that interaction between the public and government to ensure that when you come for a service, you can get access to that. It's not about making greater efficiencies for the city workforce, it's making sure the folks in the city that consume the benefits that the city provides can get access to those services very easy. The next thing that we're gonna be focused on is ensuring that from a cybersecurity perspective, perspective that the city is well secured. We saw what happened in Atlanta, we saw what happened in Baltimore, we've seen what happened with SolarWinds. We wanna ensure that not only, not only is the city services provided are seamless, but we wanna make sure that those are well secured. The other thing that we're gonna look at is how do, we, how do we close the digital divide? When you live in the city and you commute into the city, things like broadband shouldn't be a thing that you have to ask for. It's not a luxury, it's a necessity. So we wanna make sure that the folks that are part of the most underserved portions of the community have access to those services so as they go into school, they can compete with the rest of the world. The goal is to make New York City the tech hub of the world. And uh, from January 1st, we're gonna get one step closer every day. Thank you. Now the second person that I will introduce is actually someone I worked very, very closely with at the School Construction Authority. She proved to be an excellent leader and is now the Commissioner of Department of Buildings. 
her new position will be basically the efficiency czar for New York City. As you know, uh, Mayor-elect Adams during his uh, campaign spoke often about the cumbersome and often um, unwieldy situation when we're dealing with the various uh, agencies. As you heard yesterday with his announcement of the deputy mayors, our goal is to work as a team. We will continue to make sure that we are open to everyone's ideas and thoughts, but in particular for Melanie LaRocca, who will be the efficiency czar. She will go through every agency and every process to find those things that no longer make sense, that are not legally required, but instead just cause more and more bureaucracy. So I am thrilled that Melanie LaRocca will be our new efficiency czar. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor-elect Adams, for having the privilege of joining your administration and to incoming Deputy Mayor, First Deputy Mayor Lorraine Grillo. Uh, I'll be brief. The Mayor-elect has put forward a very clear vision for this city, and that is to become a more efficient, effective, and equal city and I look forward to bringing about that vision and to bring us together as a city of many different agencies but operating under one clear goal, um, and that is to look more closely at what we're doing and understanding why, and as the mayor-elect has said very often, it's time to get stuff done. And so we'll put aside our different agency uh, missions, we'll reevaluate our missions, and we'll ask ourselves the tough question of what are we doing here and how is this serving New Yorkers? Our neighbors demand better services. They demand a more efficient and effective city as a whole. And I look forward uh, to working on effectuating the Mayor Lex's vision. And I thank you again for the uh, honor and trust of this position. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to take a, a few off-topic questions, uh, and just a few, because I'm in a training course to become more emotionally intelligent, as I want to get back up to my course. Uh, Jose? Yes, the, the role of Matt is going to be different than what we're currently doing. Right now, uh, every new form of technology in every agency is going to go under Matt's prison. He's, go, he's going to look at it and he's going to scale it up. Mm -hmm. so my question that I want to ask you now yes. is, You know, and that's a great question. His, his, if you look at my appointments, it's a combination of skill, government officials, and new people. Uh, my police commissioner, new. My Department of Correction, new. My chancellor, new. Sheena Wright, new. If you look at those who are experienced people, like my first deputy mayor, who understands government and how to navigate government, you are seeing a brilliant mayor that knows how to bring the best of both parties together to create a brilliant city. And so it is really not smart to throw out those brilliant officials who understand government, committed, had some great ideas, and never had the ability to execute those ideas. I sat down, I interviewed, I vetted, I heard those ideas, and I know they are the right team members. You look at what Matt did during COVID, how he identified those officers who were out sick and put in, put in place a real-time system to help us navigate through that. And you look at some of the technology 
that he has done already, you know we should not be telling him to leave this team. I want him on this team. And there are other people in government, I want them on this team. You're going to see a combination of the best of both universes. Hey, Anna, how are you? Yeah, how are you? Good. Um, I'm going to ask, um, can you speak about how you plan to address the complications of speech states uh, in New York? Uh, how Obama can shed some light on that. What, what, what do you have? Listen, um, this uh, Adonis knows knows it best. Adonis, you want to touch on that? What is the question? It's free space. Well, one thing that I give all the credit to TA and family for Safe Street and all the hero is that the street doesn't belong to all who own cars. That New York City only had from, we have 8.6 million New Yorkers, and only 1.4 million of us have cars. We had to be there for them, but also we had to be there for the seven million New Yorkers who are pedestrians. So I think that what we will be working with the vision of the mayor is about sharing the space. We need to, you know, it is time for us to look at all the places in the world and see how they turn in more space into open street, into plaza, but also give life, give activity to those places. So I think that most New Yorkers support that we share the space, we had to take more space from cars and give it to pedestrians and give it to cyclists. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, I just want to touch on that. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. Hold on, I want to touch on that um, uh, for the New York Times, which is important. And let me tell you what we're not going to see. We're not going to see illegal ATVs driving on our sidewalks, driving up and down the streets, making our street dangerous. We're not going to see uh, the uncoordinated utilization of our streets to do things that are dangerous. We're going to create a safe way to move in the city. We're going to expand pedestrian plazas uh, where they're not only localized in some communities, they're going to be citywide. Uh, what is happening in some communities should also happen in other communities. We must be more inviting and creative about utilizing our streets in a safe way. And that's why uh, Adonis understands that. He knows what's is happening in our central business district is not happening uh, in Washington Heights. It's not happening in South Jamaica, Queens, in Brownsville. Uh, the failure to connect the use of our streets uh, is something that we're going to ensure that it is equitable. And I'm looking forward to his ideas. He has moved around this city to do that. And that is one of the primary reasons I want him as a commissioner in DOT. We can do both because I'm a bounce in a moment. I got to get back to my training. I want to be really clear on COVID. COVID is organized. We are not going to be disorganized. There is one mayor right now in the city. I speak with him three times a day. He's executing his plan. That plan consists of what he announced today that I support, incentives for booster shots. That plan calls for mandatory vaccination uh, for those who are employees of the city. Uh, he's calling out his plan. I am not going to add to the chaos by being in conflict with what he's doing. January 1st, I'm going to swear in, and we're going to execute our plan. That's going to be a combination of technology, a combination of law enforcement, a combination of our other agencies. I'm going to roll out my plan. I'm not going to feed in the desire to say, Eric, do you agree or disagree with the mayor? That is not happening. One mayor, and on January 1st, there will be a new mayor, and that mayor is going to be disciplined, that mayor is going to know how to execute a plan, and he's going to know how to keep the city safe. This city is going to be in great hands with Eric Adams. I'm going to get us through COVID. I'm going to get us through the economic crisis. I'm going to make sure the city recovers. But what's not going to happen, I'm not going to get into, do you think the mayor de Blasio is a good or bad mayor? I'm not doing that. January 1st, I'm the mayor. And on that day, I'm going to roll out how I'm going to execute the plan. COVID is going to evolve by then. 
This is a moving target that I must be prepared to execute a plan based on that day, and I'm willing to do so. And that's the same with my inauguration. I said it yesterday, I'm gonna say it again. I don't need an inauguration. All I need is a mattress and a floor to execute being the mayor of the city of New York. I don't need an inaug inauguration. And I'm going to speak with Brad and Jamani and tell them it is best for us to forego an inauguration because we don't want to put people in a dangerous environment. I'm going to lead the city because I'm capable of leading the city. And the people of the city chose me to be the mayor and they made a smart decision because I can do it. You could do on or off, just do your thing, because you're, you're a Knicks fan. <laughs> We're going to be looking through the whole city, and we're going to be, first of all, day one, I'm going to be going to the agency, uh, listening from the experts that we have there, people that they have decades of experience, and we're going to be looking at where in the city should we start it. We have not decided yet. We will meet with the team. What we know is that there is now funding at the federal level that is part of the infrastructure plan, the city with the vision of the mayor, we want to make the city more sustainable. And that's, you know, we don't have a specific location to announce today we are going to be studying. We will, it will be announced as we coordinate with the mayor. That's one of the things that we want. We have to make the city greener. That's the vision with the mayor, and that's going to be part of the plan. Thank you. Um, this question for you, Mayor-elect. I know you said you would address the letter sent by some of the incoming council members about your stance on child care confinement. Uh, 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 first, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little disappointed because all of you were at the press conference that I had at uh, Borough Hall, and I was extremely clear. I do not support solitary confinement. I support punitive segregation. That's a difference. Solitary confinement is throwing someone in a small jail cell, locking them up. It's inhumane. We should not do that. I was the chair and the, the, the head of crime and correction in the state senate. I visited correctional facilities all over the state. I fought against inhumane uh, incarceration treatment. That's my legacy. And so for people to continue to say, Eric supports solitary confinement. That is just a lie. I support punitive segregation. I am not going to be in a city where dangerous people assault innocent people, go to jail, and assault more people. You cannot have a jail system where someone sexually assault a staffer, slash a, an inmate, and then say, it is all right, I'm going to give you an iPad and just hug you and say, don't do it again. No, if you are violent, you must be removed from population so that you don't inflict, inflict violence on other people. That's clear. 80% of the people in punitive segregation attack other inmates. 40% of the correction officers are black and brown women. They, have, they are talking about being assaulted, sexually assaulted, attacked. Can you imagine someone sexually assault you, then you walk back and do your job and you see that person still in general population? That's unacceptable. And so those who are romanticizing this issue, I'm asking them, go do a week on Rikers Island, spend time there, then you come out and tell me that dangerous people should walk up and down and not be held accountable for their, for their action. Then, this is the same conversation about defund the police. Same conversation. You, public safety can't be a bumper sticker. And so those who signed a letter 
didn't reach out to me? Why am I learning about the letter through the media? If you want to work as a partner, call me. Hear my, my understandings and my belief. The one thing that's different from everyone that signed the letter and Eric Adams, I wore a bulletproof vest for 22 years and protected the people of this city. And when you do that, then you have the right to question me on safety and public safety matters. I think I know a little something about this. I'm going to protect my correction officers. I'm going to protect the inmates that are serving time. And I'm not going to allow violent people to do violence and think they can do it without being held accountable. And we can do it in a humane fashion. And if anyone wants to talk to me about that, don't write a letter. Call me and speak with me. That is how we're going to resolve this. There's a body of people that are coming into the city council. They have no desire in moving our city forward. Their desire is to be disruptive. What I am going to do, I'm going to ignore them. I'm going to stay committed, undistracted, and I'm going to grind. If they like it or not, I'm the mayor. <laughs>